Let's talk about four types of problems that are often in quizzes on perfect competition. First of all, we'll talk about economic profit, then how much to produce, when to shut down, and what happens in the what happens to profits, especially in the long run. So let's start out with economic profit. So let's say Marcus owns a firm. The revenues are a million dollars. He has explicit costs, that is, po costs he has to pay uh, wages, rent, other costs of 900000 He has an implicit cost, the money he doesn't receive, that is, he could work somewhere else and earn 100000 What is Mark's economic profit and what is his accounting profit? Well, good question. I'm glad I asked that. So, let's calculate it. So, he has profits, or I'm sorry, he has revenue of 1 million So we're going to, profit's going to be revenue minus his explicit costs. Minus his implicit cost. And when I say profit, I mean economic profit here. So a million minus explicit cost is 900,000. And implicit cost is 100000 his foregone wages. And there's other implicit costs, but in this question, there's just the one. So we have a million minus 900000 is 100000 minus 100000 is zero. So the answer for economic profit is zero. Now, in accounting profit, we have the million. We have the explicit costs, but we're assuming that we don't calculate as a cost the cost that you don't receive. So or the money you don't receive, I should say. And so we're going to leave off the implicit cost. So for accounting profits, it's 1 million minus the 900,000. So it would be 100,000 would be our, our uh, economic profits in accounting. Normally, the rest of this chapter, we're going to assume economic profits. So this is accounting profits. And this is economic profit. And actually, what we're going to see is economic profits, this would be a, a long run equilibrium. He's making what he would make in the next best industry. If um, his implicit cost, if he could make 150000 somewhere else, well, then we'd have a million minus 900,000 minus 150,000. That would be negative 50,000, saying he could earn 50,000 some dollars more if he left this industry and went and worked for somebody else. So we t he has an incentive to exit the industry in, this, in that case. If the implicit, if his foregone wages instead of 100,000 was 50,000, well, then he'd have a million minus 900,000 minus 50,000, which would be positive 50,000. He has $50,000 more than his next best opportunity. He has an incentive to stay. And in fact, if other people have the same costs and revenues, or at least expected it, you'd also see other, for other companies trying to, to copy that. Let's go to the next question. So, how much to produce? Well, in this case, Let's draw a diagram. Actually, let's draw it right here. Here's our quantity for our firm. Here's our price. Um, looks like our price for all firms is $4. And actually, let me show you how that's calculated. I'll Let me put it down here so I have a little bit more space. So we basically have a supply curve. We have a demand curve, equilibrium quantity, equilibrium price. And here's the $4. And so then we go over to the firm, and the firm, basically these firms are, <coughs> excuse me, are producing exactly what an, anybody else can produce. They're identical products. It might be farming or something like that. That's our four dollars. That's our marginal revenue, which is equal to our price. Here's quantity. Here's price. We have upward sloping marginal cost curves. And so for this firm, this quantity. This would be, looks like, what, four and four? This would be firm C. Um, here's a company where the marginal cost might be um, $6. And uh, so this would be firm, let's use a different color. 
Um, so here's the six dollar. And there's our six dollars. There's our six dollars right there. And then let's choose this one. So that firm's, to, you know, I don't want to spend six dollars to make four dollars. This firm should produce, actually let's do red. Firm B should produce less. And then let's do uh, let's do violet right here. Um, this firm over here, firm A. Here I'll put firm A right here. Additional cost, marginal cost is two dollars. Would I spend two dollars to make four? Absolutely. But that firm should produce more. So we can get right here, like firm B. Firm B, you know, firm A is leaving spend two dollars to make four dollars additional profits two bucks produce more firm c uh, or firm c is just right spending four dollars to make four dollars but it's picking up all this money over here that's just the additional revenue from one more unit so that last unit for firm c doesn't increase their profits but they've taken advantage of all the profit opportunities firm a was well, um i'm sorry firm b over here spending six dollars to make four dollars they're losing profit. That's two dollars less profitable for that unit, so they should produce less. So let's go to the next problem. Shut down. Even if profit is negative, if firms blank, then it's best to stay open. Well, the general case is, if you can't cover, if you stay open, you have to pay your variable costs. If you shut down, you only have to pay your fixed cost. So if you shut down, you're going to bear a loss equal to your fixed cost. So the general case is if your revenues are greater than your variable costs, right here, if your revenues are greater than your variable costs, then stay open. This is the same thing. Some books will call this as price is greater than, and actually this is price is greater, or revenue is greater than or equal to the variable cost, which means also price is greater than or equal to average cost is another way of writing the same thing. Now, why do economists have two ways of writing the same way? I think sometimes we just like to complicate things. Sorry about that. But hopefully it's pretty clear. Stay open if your revenue is more than your variable cost. Likewise, if we'll assume that if your revenue is equal to your variable cost, still stay open. If your revenue is less than your variable costs, down here, close down. So, but in this case, stay open is, would be the right answer would be B. Let's go to our last question. Assume the average cost of a firm is $300. A new innovation lowers the average cost to $200. What will be the long run price and profit level? Well, in the long run, we expect the economic profit. And when we say profit, we mean economic profit. Remember in question one, we said that in the long run equilibrium, if there's, or first in the short run, if there's profits, firms will enter your profits will go to zero in the long run. If there's losses, firms will leave the industry, which means there's more for the remaining firms, and profits go up until you're making zero economic profit. In other words, you're making what you'd make somewhere else. So we know it's going to be price, it's going to be zero economic profit, so A looks good. Um, B looks so good in the last part right there where it says there will be zero economic profits. C doesn't work, but we know that general theory is also price is going to equal average cost in the long run because that's when there'll be zero economic profits. In other words, for a competitive firm, here's the price is equal to marginal revenue, marginal revenue, sorry about that. Here's marginal cost, here's price, here's quantity. Um, in the long run, we would expect the average cost to be right here, if I can draw that well, maybe not that well. Assuming the firm, and remember step one, if this is our price, price should equal marginal cost. So this would be our quantity. Step two, price is equal to average cost in the long run. So there's zero economic profits. If price is greater than average cost, there'll be economic profits. You're making more money here than somewhere else. So other firms will enter, the profits are gone because they entered, they, you know, there's more comp competition. If price is less than average cost, 
Well, then you're making a loss, and then firms exit. So in this case, which one works best? Well, prices will fall to the new average cost, $200. That looks good. And there'll be zero, economic, zero profits, which we mean zero economic profits in the long run. A is a great answer. Very good.